The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us that whoever builds a mosque for Allah, Allah will build for him a similar house in Jannah. And we know the great reward that will not only be gained, but rather will fill your grave after your death. Whenever someone prays there, whenever someone gives shahada in the masjid, whenever someone learns something in the masjid, yes, that will be something that you'll have on your scale. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you guys doing? I was recently sent a video from a good friend of mine of this guy called Constantine relating a discussion, a conversation that he had with Ben Shapiro. Let's take a look at the key points of contention and come back and respond in kind. And so to me, masculinity isn't about having big muscles or having a big head or wide fists or whatever. Uh, if we think about our conversation earlier about power, like I remember talking to Ben Shapiro about this and he was like, yeah, there's this guy on the internet who's like, yeah, I could, I could take off, I've got big muscles. And he was like, yeah, I could pay people to shoot you. Now, I'll be honest with you, for more than one reason, I found the contents of this video quite disturbing. Now, whether or not this Ben Shapiro was talking about me, the muscular guy, I think the people can make that judgment themselves, whether the muscular guy is the champ or whether it's not the champ. But that's something you can discuss later. But the, the content of the video where he was saying, well, I can get someone to shoot him. I've got a question for you, Ben. If you're talking about, whether or not you're talking about it, it's irrelevant and immaterial. Here's my question for you. What would make you any different from my wife or my child, my daughter, for example? If your only consequence as a man is to pay another man to deal with your work, if that's your consequence as a man, then what makes you different from my wife or my daughter? What makes you any different? Because that's the same consequence my wife has or my daughter has, my 10-year-old daughter. She has the same consequences as you do. She can come to me and, and say that this person has abused me, this person has done this, and then I will defend her. So what you're actually admitting here there is that you don't have any consequence of your own. You're a docile man with limited consequences. That's the truth of the matter. And what's ironic of the situation, bro, as well, I didn't tell you this, but what's ironic of the situation is the fact that this guy was speaking for about three minutes prior about masculinity. And he... and. Constantine was talking for about three minutes. I couldn't get... I've heard this before, what he was saying. He's talking about the chimps and all these kind of things. Things that you've heard from Jordan Peterson. Eff effectively, a copy and paste of Jordan Peterson's, um, you know, discussion on the matter. About prim chimps and this and whatever. And for some reason or another, he brought Ben Shapiro into a discussion. I, I don't know... <laughs> let's, let's be fair. Let's be fair. Now, you're talking about pay, being paid. Are you being paid to talk about Ben Shapiro in the context of masculinity, because I know for a fact he's trying to appear like a man now. He's done a rap video recently. Huh? He's trying to be, uh, he's trying to appear like a man. He's trying to maybe, he's trying to, I don't know what he's doing, bro, but really and truly on, a, on, a acad on an academic level, let's speak frankly, what is masculinity? Because obviously we come from different, okay, traditions. But according to both of our traditions, there's actually a very similar definition. A very similar kind of like theme, if you like. Because if you look at, if you like the Western tradition, and obviously the Western tradition is not one monolith, but if you look at, for example, the classical period, the Hellenistic period, the pre-Socratic period, uh, Plato, Aristotle, the Nicomachean eth ethics, uh, Plato's Republic, all these kinds of things, it would seem to me that the main thing that makes a man differentiates a man, distinguishes a man from his female counterpart. What really makes a man is bravery. That is the key virtue, the key differentiating virtue. And that's not to say that woman cannot be uh, brave. It just means that men need to have this virtue in more abundance than a woman does so that they can enact the things that they need to enact as warriors, as providers, as protectors. Now, this was understood. In fact, the Greek word, uh, Andreas or effectively uh, masculinity is the same word for bravery and the same thing is applicable in the islamic tradition because in the islamic tradition the prophet told us that the worst thing in a man is for him to be stingy and for him to be a coward so bravery clearly is the is the 
main virtue which makes a man a man. Now, I want you to ask you a question or anybody else a question. What do you think? What evidence do we have that Ben Shapiro has manifested any level of bravery in his life? The most brave thing he's ever done is challenge college students. And that's not brave at all because they're not his they're not equals to him. The debates he's had were, were with people that were effectively sympathetic to a lot of his worldview. So he has not manifested that he should not be in these conversations. And in fact, recently his friend Lex Friedman has put a list of major names, including my own, of course, of the pro-Palestinian side. But I would have to say more senior names, people like Norman Finkelstein, people like Abdullah Andalusi, who were on that list. And he has a choice of all these people, all of which have called him out for a debate on the Palestine issue, one of his main bread and butter issues. And if you look at that list of the main names that Lex Friedman, without consultation, and other people have recommended to him, you'll realize that Ben Shapiro has never, ever debated those people on that issue. Now, is that really a display of bravery and of valor? I don't think so. I don't think so at all. So he is a coward, and I think there's good evidence for that. The fact that this man is a coward, and I'm speaking now honestly on a genuine level, I think he's a coward. I think, in fact, Jordan Peterson, with all of the disagreements that we have with him, showed more fortitude Yes, then he did, in the fact that he at least conversed with me. He had a discussion. He came face to face. You've got to give him some liver credit. At least he stood in front. I mean, we just completely disagree with the guy, but Ben Shapiro couldn't muster that. Let alone to go to someone like Norman Finkelstein, who for 40 years has been searching, researching this topic and would shred this man to pieces intellectually. Moreover, I would like to say that why on earth... Would you even mention, hmm? why on some on earth would someone like you even mention shooting this person, that person? Aren't your Zionist counterparts doing enough of that anyway to the children? Shooting the children? Had I said, I can pay somebody else to shoot them, that would be front page news. But that's another story for another day. Suffice it for me to say now, suffice it for me to say that unfortunately, the Zionist project and its proponents have shown the most cowardice I've seen from anybody ever before. And you, as a proponent of that, are no different, Ben Shapiro. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Hey you, are you wasting your time on social media again? Your brothers and sisters in the Islam net from Norway are establishing a masjid, a dawah center. Establishing a masjid to convey the message of Islam is one of the best deeds a Muslim can do. There's a huge need for it in Norway. You know this and I know this. So that makes the reward even greater. So give generously and Allah Azza wa Jal will give you even more.